The world is filled with half truth and absurdities. And believe it's getting grilled like the third degree. But if you ask, then you can be assured that we seek truth and we look through the word to see. Clear proof that points to the clues of E. Like changing news that God has for you and me. Ladies and gentlemen, you're ready, cause here we go. Straight out of Phoenix, this is Backpack Radio. Yeah, this is Backpack Radio. Coming at you every Sunday night, 6 p.m. Keep that music pumping, man. It's all good. This is our new intro, only the second week out the gate. What's up, Pastor Bob? That's a good intro. It is. It gets you all hyped. I think he's about to say our name, though, right here. Yeah, that's, I like the way he says my name. So we got to stop for a second. Okay, here it comes. With your hosts, yeah. Pastors Bo Cat Malone, Ramon, and Bob. Bob. That's CDZ, the messenger out of Salt Lake City. Thanks for the new intro. David Jeremiah, the producer. Yeah, man. And it's a little more accurate. We don't talk about call-in get, uh, listeners or anything because we don't Yeah, we don't want any call-ins. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, th- this is back. We want you to write, though. Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah. If we have time, we'll get some listener feedback today. I don't know if we'll have time, though. I am Vocab. Ramon's not with us today, but I am with Pastor Bob and my son Micah. Of course, we got Jeremy the Engineer holding it down. This is a wonderful day to join you, the first week of August. We come at you every Sunday night, 6 p.m. You can catch us live through 1360 KPXQ's streaming function. Backpackradio.com is where you'll find all of our archived episodes. Go to iTunes, look for us there. Please give us some stars and a good review, and we'll give you a thumbs up. Now, Pastor Bob, today's show on Backpack Radio does exemplify something we say a lot as a motto here, which is street-level apologetics. And we often say street-level apologetics for the 21st century. We talk about apologetics for the metropolitan mind, for the guy who rides a light rail, uh, you know, apologetics the, for the classroom seat to the inner city street. Urban flair, all of that. Today, and some unusual topics. That's true. Yeah, and today really exemplifies that. So don't leave if you think this is esoteric, because if you're in a city area, you may encounter this, and this show may be the one thing that pre- prepares you. And I'm not joking. I, I really mean that. Today's topic is the Black Hebrew Israelite movement. Black Hebrew Israelites. It's a mouthful. There's some information about them online. Not a ton. There's not a lot written. Uh, You can go to their YouTube channels and see them generally yelling at bystanders. And we're going to talk more about them. But to do that, we have a special guest joining us who has also encountered this movement. I've encountered this movement up close and personal. Welcome to Backpack Radio, Slim Jim of the Veritas Domain blog. What's up, Slim Jim? Hey, hey, how are you guys doing? Yeah, so uh, I've been checking out your blog, The Domain for Truth. You guys are out of there in Cali, and you've ran into some BHI guys, a.k.a. Black Hebrew Israelites, and so that's why we got you on. <laughs> hey, Slim Jim, does, is this movement, how do they proselytize? How do they get new adher- adherents to it? Yeah, uh, just like uh, um, both of you guys uh, were saying, um, yeah, there, there's very little uh, known about them, so I've only ran into them a few times. And the times that I have ran into them, they it seems like their biggest way, their MO is really yelling and just arguing and showing everything that, that I guess, in apologetics we say ought not to do. Um, there's lack of gentleness and less, lack of respect. So they, they like, for example, the way I encountered BHI was um, I was coming off, uh, I was by the light rail station, and they were posted up there where everybody's coming out of the light rail on Camelback and 19th, and they were just set up and just yelling. And when anybody would walk by, depending on who it was, they would yell at them some specific thing related to it. For example, if it was a black man with a white girlfriend, they would yell some problematic statements about that couple. Uh, things like that, the sort of supremacist in their leanings. But they would just yell, say all the stuff. They have these pictures and signs and, you know, with Jesus with horns saying he doesn't look like that. That's a perception of the devil. Jesus is black, blah, blah, blah. And so I went up to him and talked to them, sort of like Jim did there in Cali. And so we've had these experiences, and that's kind of what they do, sometimes at a college campus, sometimes really just right there on the street. And uh, every- do, they, do they have any written doctrinal statement? Not that I can tell. There's some sort of literature that's sort of underground, it looks like. There's some stuff on websites. The key thing is word of mouth, and they just say, hey, we hold to the, the Bible. 
Some of them hold to the Apocrypha. Some of them only hold to the Old Testament. It depends on the particular group, but they're very the ones I met are very scriptural oriented. And, in their and approach. given their position on ancestry, maybe we'll we'll get into that more. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I assume you can't be converted into the group, right? Uh, because you don't have the right credentials, you're not of the right ancestry? You have to be part of the ethnic lineage. However, they have a big thing where they show videos saying white man submits to the BHI. And, like, if they're talking to a white guy on the street and they tell him to take off his hat, which is a big deal for them, if he takes off his hat, it's like a victory for them that they've made a white man submit, which he will be eternally doing in the in the new heaven and new earth where all the uh, sort of non-chosen races – will be subservient to the chosen people who are the lost tribes of Israel, including the BHI. Yeah, uh, on, on top of that, um, <laughs> at least my, a particular group that, that we ran into uh, in Pasadena City College here in, in Southern California, um, I, I'm actually of Asian uh, ethnicity, so they, they mentioned that it's only those that were of black Hebrew could be saved. Um, but they mentioned that sometimes the race have been all mixed up, and so I was with another guy who's also uh, Asian American, and they were saying to me that, oh, I might be possible to, uh, of salvation because of the fact that I might have have some African blood in me to do that extent. So I, I thought that was fascinating. That was very interesting. And like what you guys, you know, affirming what you guys said, uh, race is a big part. Um, in their theology, in their soteriology. Yeah, when I told them I was part Sicilian, they actually sort of lightened up on me and got pretty excited and said it's possible yeah. I may be of the chosen people. Why and would I that just, be? It's a little confusing, but it goes back to the the sort of how the how Sicily's been conquered so much, and so it's possible you could have more blood or North African blood. So if, if anybody Sicilian. can trace any amount of uh, ancestry to... It's uh, possible you could be of the chosen race, which they are. But you still would have to become a black Hebrew Israelite? Yeah, you sort of be waking yeah. up to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Now, well, let's... Well, yeah, let me read a little bit. Let's read a little bit about uh, the police. Because is, I think for yeah. our listeners, I know when I first heard about this show not too many weeks ago, I said... What? Right. So let's. That's another one of vocab's topics. So this comes from UK Apologetics. Yeah. Good uh, site. Somebody you found. So black Hebrew Israelites are varying groups of people, largely of, uh, of black American ancestry, mostly situated in the United States, who believe that they are the descendants of the ancient Israelites. So I guess we kind of already said that. It goes on. Yeah. These black Hebrews adhere in varying degrees to the religious beliefs and practices of mainstream Judaism. Despite this, they are generally not accepted by Jews as being any part of the greater Jewish community. Undeterred by this, however, most black Hebrews often consider themselves, and not mainstream Jews, to be the only authentic descendants of the ancient Israelites who one may read about in the Old Testament. Yes. Now, let me play a clip that is somewhat related to this. You're going to hear me interact with them, and I'm not saying I did all this perfect. Sometimes I got a little bit of bravado with them, which was kind of foolish for me to do. There's like 10 of these guys and just one of me. But let me play you a clip where you hear some of that interaction related to sort of this Hebrew stuff going on to give you an idea. 30 seconds. Here it goes. What's paleo? Uh, hold on, wait, wait. We don't know Hebrew, right? Paleo. What does Adam mean? What does Adam mean? It means like dirt man or earth man. Right. So, okay. So if it means dirt man. Knowing the definition of word don't mean you're going to speak the language. Don't it say teach the people with the with truth? That word is okay, true? Okay. Quote me the Shema. Deuteronomy 6.4. Shema means to hear. No, quote me the Shema. That, what is the Shema? There's it's no the book pro- in the Bible called Shema. <laughs> Show me the book of the Bible called Deuteronomy 6 4. The, the very creed of Israel, which is here of Israel, the Lord your God is one. Right. Any true Israelite would know the Shema by, by heart in Hebrew. What is it? What? And so my point there is I'm challenging them on their claims that, first of all, they know Hebrew, and second of all, that they're true Israelites. I say, quote me the Mashah, he says, there's no book of the Bible called the Shema. <laughs> but do you guys understand the significance of that? challenge within their worldview do you know what i'm saying jim yeah yeah um yeah i think that's like what you with the rest of the clip uh, on your blog um for a jew to not know uh to say verbatim deuteronomy 6 4 is kind of problematic uh, to their identity of showing that they they are jewish that they know what they're talking about that they know the scripture and that they know their hebrew 
Right. So, I mean, I think that's that was helpful. But, Pastor Bob, do you get an idea of the interaction? There's a lot of and, yelling. And this, this happened at the uh, Light Rail Station? You yeah, said, 19th Avenue. So there's, in a, here in the background. there's a group here, or do they call it in a synagogue here? Uh, I don't, I can't, I have, they, they do have some synagogues sometimes, like in Columbus, Ohio, where I'm from, there's meeting places and they'll call them something like a temple or, or something like that. Sometimes they'll call it house of Israel. They have like these, and they meet on Saturday. I think so. It's a little confusing because they seem really opposed to meeting. Like when I told them I was a pastor, they got a big hoop and holler out of that. They, oh, you meet in a building, in a building, in a building, like made with hands, like here's the people with the steeple. Uh, do you take a tithe? Like they thought it was really funny uh, about passing the plate and meeting in a building, but they do meet. And the local group here, Pastor Bob, on their YouTube channel, the one in Phoenix, has posted 387 videos. So it's mainly of them yelling at people at the light rail station, but there's also some of them at, like, you know, Lolo's chicken and waffles chopping up the scripture or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Jim, comment on what we've said so far and maybe tell us a little bit about your uh, initial meeting with these guys. Yeah, uh, the first time I met them uh, was probably back in 2004. Um, I used to work security before before I entered the ministry in, in Hollywood Boulevard. And and I got a call to, to go up front uh, where the business uh, our client was at. Where, and these guys are just shouting, and they were wearing these very strange clothes. And I know you mentioned this vocab uh, last yeah. night when we were talking. It looks like it's Bible um, children's clothes. It was just strange. Like and from a church very, play, like from a church yeah, play that you would yeah, cut yeah, out on a cloth. Yeah, exactly. And, and they were just yelling, and it was just very hostile. And, and it's strange to see how there's all these people walking around that were liberals at first thinking, oh, what is this? This seems interesting. And then to see them shouting them down. So that that was interesting to see. Um, but because the first time, um, it was just so uh, argumentative, so loud. I couldn't understand what they're saying. And that, that was that work that I just went on. But then the second time I met them was actually in, in, when I, we were ministering with our ministry, with our church ministry, do a uh, apologetics ministry, going around different uh, community college, mainly community colleges, um, setting up tables with apologetics questions. Uh, some Christians came by to our table and mentioned that there's some strange cults or something uh, over there, and if they could come over, we could come over just to talk to them. So that's how we first uh, encountered them, which led to that video clip. We we talked for about an hour or so before we recorded it uh, and put it up on our blog towards the end segment when they were more calm. Um, so yeah, that that was our first encounter, and we were just um, probably very uh, surprised. It just seems like a caricature, um, not really what someone really believed. Just their their amount of hostility and just the amount of how they would argue just seems so. It's almost like you didn't think they were serious, like it was like staged or something, because it's so yeah, over the top. Yes, exactly. That's exactly how, how we felt. Um, so, I Jim, you begin. guys have the clip of you up on your blog, Veritas Domain. I encourage people on the break to go check that out, Veritas D- Domain. Just search for Black Hebrew Israelites. When we come back, we'll play some more audio, as well as discussing some more about their beliefs and practices of the Black Hebrew Israelites with my man Slim Jim. This is Backpack Radio. You're listening to us on KPXQ Faith Talk 1360 Radio. That's the first time I've ever said that. Um, we've been talking about the black Hebrew Israelites. And if you list, didn't listen to this last section, you may say, what is that? Uh, it's, a, it's a group of, uh, of African Americans who see themselves as the actual descendants. And I, I read the first section uh, uh, as Vokab and I were talking with uh, our guest, Slim Jim, from UK Apologetics. I'll continue to read a little bit more so you can get a, a better background. Yeah. Uh, the article goes on, the black Hebrews, that's this group we're talking about, mostly believe but cannot prove nor supply convincing evidence of the claim that they are descended from the Israelites who were expelled from Jerusalem by the Romans in AD 70. They believe that they formed part of the dis- diaspora spreading around Europe and Asia for more than a thousand years before reaching West Africa and later the United States as slaves. Their Semitic ancestors, they believe, were sold by Hamitic Africans to Ishmaelite Arabian slave traders who in turn sold them to European transatlantic slave traders in the 1600s. 
So they get really caught up, as you can tell, on lineage. And you see that chart there at the bottom where they say which tribe of Israel represents which ethnicity. Do you see that? There's a chart down there further in the article. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which oh, is yes, interesting. Yes. Doesn't Paul tell Timothy something about that, Pastor Bob? Well, yeah. In fact, this, the very last paragraph of this article uh, is a great, a great paragraph. He said, so even if the racial and ancestral claims of the black Hebrew Israelites could, should be correct, a thing one really must consider to be highly dubious, one would have to retort by asking, so what? And then he quotes, for in Christ, well, that's not a quote from the Bible, for in Christ, race becomes an irrelevant matter. It, it doesn't matter. And I think that's the main point. That is, I'm not sure, even if they could prove it, which, which they can't, so what? Well, on their theology, it matters. And I did quote to them when I spoke to them, Acts 17, where Paul says, from one man, he made all, all men, you know, Adam, one blood, everybody, as well as Galatians 3.28, which is, in Christ, there's neither Greek nor Jew. And then, doesn't Paul tell Timothy, do not get caught up in endless genealogical lists? He specifically says, don't get ch- caught, caught up in that. Yeah. I, I guess if they don't accept the New Testament, the, some of those arguments Some do. W- the ones apply. I were interacting with did. The ones I was interacting well, with did. Well, but then I guess the question is, and this, this gets back to, you know, one of the definitions really of a cult that, that has somewhat of a Christian or Jewish base to it is, is that they have a, a mass distortion yeah. of the Bible. And this one is as is, is, uh, grievous as I've ever known about, meaning... Meaning at that point the the ancestry becomes important, and then of course they're the only chosen ones, they're the only saved yeah. ones. That's similar to other cults. Yeah. Uh, but when you step back and look at the Bible from a, uh, from afar, you just can't. You realize that it just uh, is way way out of line with. Uh, with, you know, uh, uh, Orthodox Christianity. Yeah, Slim Jim, remember when you guys were talking, there's a part where one of you guys asked him, well, how do you define white man? And do you remember what the guy you're talking to said? <laughs> he said yeah, something oh. funny in the beginning. He, he said, how do you define white man? His answer was, do you remember? Because I, I just listened to your clip last night. You know, you know what? I, I don't, I actually don't, don't remember. The guy that, you that. guys were talking to says, I don't know, devil, liar. <laughs> Okay. That was the way it was defined. <laughs> yeah, well, with that debate, I know it wasn't shown um, because it, it was one hour of them pretty right. extreme until we started recording. Towards, when we started recording, they softened their claim about um, – because they were saying they could kill any white man at the moment. And that's when um, the other guy that was evangelizing with me, Andy, started recording. And we were fortunate. We, we had a crowd gathering, and a crowd that started being favorable towards us. Um, so that kind of controlled them, you know, um, steamrolling us. Well, and were so, either of you guys uh, fearful for any physical retaliation? Uh, we, we, not at the moment, largely because, uh, because we we were. Uh, I was actually afraid just for at first when they were just so angry about um, Caucasians. I was just thinking, oh man, there's guys we evangelized with. Them. I was more afraid with them. Um, I, I think when they saw that I was darker Asian, there was something with them that they were like what kind of like uh, Ramon uh, Malone described, very almost like, oh, maybe you might be one of us. You might be that you need to just know. Um, so it, it, I think the camera actually calmed them down. The camera calmed them down, and they started being new, more nuanced and saying that the, the white man has gone over, conquered everybody, and you might have some some blood that, that is black Hebrew um, or Hebrew. Israeli blood, so so that I guess kind of calmed it down. Um, but originally, I was kind of um, a little bit nervous. Um, but but because there was a crowd, I think they were more um, more in control. I suppose. When I was talking with them, they never uh, threatened me or acted like they were going to get me. Although, if you watch some of their YouTube videos and you can see some of the members of the local BHI sect here in Phoenix, you'll see this is some really big guys, and they got beards, pretty some, and they're loud i mean there's they're sort of imposing and there's like 10 guys and they're just standing there yelling but they never threatened me or acted like they were or sort of gotten my personal space they never did that which i was impressed with however their overall rhetoric and what they're saying is extremely violent they talked about uh you, we'll have our our foot on your neck in the heaven and the earth and uh there's a local Columbus chapter I've watched, and in some of their videos, their tagline was uh, at that time about how O.J. Simpson did the right thing in killing Nicole Brown, 
and uh, how that's how things should be, and that was a big part of their rhetoric. So there's a lot of violence in the rhetoric of what they say, but I've never seen anything more than that, so I don't know. Um, but let's play another clip here, and uh, I'll try to stop before they start swearing at me. I think I've got the queued up in the right spot, but here it goes. <laughs> you can say, you can name whatever name, but you you can't get with me in the Hebrew. You can't get with none of us in the scripture because every scripture that you brought out, we put another scripture with it and added onto it. You haven't added anything. All you did was name one. You're on one definition called nations when you don't even read. You haven't even read the Bible to know that we was under slavery of the Moabites, the Chinese. So we was in China and we was in slavery up under the uh, Hagorians, which is Egypt. We we was in slavery up under the Canaanites, which is the land of Canaan. We was in slavery under the Romans. That's why we in Rome. And when you conquer people, you bring them in your nation. So how stupid can you be to know? Okay, I, I stopped a little early because that's where he starts. So I'm I'm stupid because I didn't know all that information. <laughs> but it, it, it's, there, it's a lot of like, it's almost like rap battling, but with biblical knowledge. Like he's, like, you can't get, I mean, this was a refrain in the conversation is how, Everything I would even put, they shut back down. I could not handle them. They were scholars. Don't step to them. Like real braggadocious in that. It was uh, it was interesting to say the least. Uh, I mean, I mean, do you get a sense of the? But the funny thing is, you know, we're laughing. But did you hear that guy rattle off all that? The guy like they got a lot of stuff in their head, is what I'm saying. You know, I couldn't rattle off that crazy list or whatever, but they can. I mean, were, you, were your guys like that, Jim, or were they a little more like? They seem newer in their BHI faith. Uh, no, it, it seemed like, yeah, they, they've they been there for a while, and it, it seemed like they, they were knowledgeable with using the Scripture toward the, the the angle that they wanted to. And they were very passionate, just like that also as well, and also swearing, uh, swearing at us also as well, or just using vulgarity in general. And, and the swearing, was, was it to emphasize their point, or was it to... Uh, to uh... Uh, uh, minimize you as an individual. What was the point of the swearing? When I mentioned to to them, they said two things. One, because I said, that's rude. And they said, doesn't Paul say that he was rude in speech? <laughs> Which is not the same rude. First, it's pretty funny. He had a, and the other one was, you just can't handle a black man being a black man. You're trying to hold me down to not be a black man. That's your real problem. So when we come back, let's play some more clips discussing with Slim Jim uh, BHI. Backpack Radio here, discussing with my man in the studio, Pastor Bob, and also the man out there in L.A., Slim Jim of Veritas Domain, a presuppositionalist uh, blog there. And uh, we've been talking about the black Hebrew Israelites, BHI, uh, dudes that yell at you in street corners. I'm going to play a little clip again from them to give uh, our listeners yet another flavor of what they do, and then my man Slim Jim is going to actually uh, critique their understanding of the gospel, which is really the real problem. But here's a little uh, flavor. From the earth, all will draw to myself. This is in the interlinear. Interlinear what? This is the, see, what book? See, there's the Greek. What text? English. Yeah, that's okay. John chapter 12. Right. This is verse 32. Uh-huh. It says, I will draw all men unto myself. Right, all men. Who are the all of the men? Acts 2 and 5. You, I, I, Why does it say all again? Israelites? No, it Let does. Because you didn't read the whole chapter. It says it so many read it. times. Yeah, read, read, John, read John chapter 12, 32. Wait, where's the Acts 2 and 5? Because, that, because right. Here's what you see. Here's what you see. That you want to limit salvation. That's what selfish man wants no, to do. No, the scripture tells you that salvation is and only for God's the children of Israel. God's bigger than your plan. No, That's of course. I'm glad, glad you don't. I mean, you, you done. Yeah. You, do you think that the white man is going to be saved? That's you telling me yeah, that the white man that the white man is going to say, "Oh, I love God," and God is going to say, "Oh, that's okay. Come to me." You actually think that? I'm telling you, we're going to be saved. There. Who's going to be saved? We're a circle around it. So what's his name? So what's his name? Okay, so Slim Jim, that gets a little bit into the deficiency of their understanding of the gospel. Well, my point there was that the gospel was good news for all people because, as another text I brought up to them, Revelation 5, that it's every tribe, nation, and tongue that uh, the Lord has drawn out his sheep. And you also caught something that displays the real issue, which is uh, abuse of what the gospel message really is. Can you share that with us? Yo, Slim Jim, you on the line? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, I got yeah. you. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, w- with the gospel, obviously, we first must begin that that we broken the law, and part, I think part of the problem also as well is uh, there's a clip uh, on clip eight 
uh, on your blog that you've loaded up when you divide it up, where towards the end, uh, four minutes into it, they mentioned, one of the guys mentioned that the world cannot sin, only Israeli I can sin, because only the Israeli I, or true uh, black Hebrew Israeli I has the law of God, the Mosaic law. And that's actually contrary to Romans 5.12, uh, just like you mentioned that the gospel is for all people. Romans 5.12 makes it very clear when it says, just as through one man, uh, sin entered into the world, death and death through sin, so death spread to all men, because all sin would show that everyone are sinners, and we all have the same law. And I thought it was inconsistent, too. They were saying that only the, the world can't sin, only Israeli can sin. But they're pointing out to you and saying that you're blaspheming, that you're you're bearing false witness, and they're saying, they're saying you're sinning the whole time. So there's a bit of inconsistency there. I actually like when I was listening to your clip, uh, Galatians 3.28, I thought was a moment when they were kind of stumped because they're ganging up on you the whole time. And Galatians 3.28, when, when you mentioned about um, the fact that there's no Jew nor Greeks, um, I, I thought that was a really weak response on their part. They're trying to say that it's Hellenized Jews. Uh, looking at the Greek, um, I think um, throughout the whole uh, gospel, throughout the whole New Testament, he- the word Helen, or which is the Jews, I don't think it's actually referenced. I was looking at Baal last night. I don't think it ever referred to Jews that were uh, Hellenized. Right, yeah. Rather, They're just called term. Hellenized Jews. They're not called Greeks. Because they were trying to yeah. say that the word Greek there actually just means Hellenized Jews. But but guys, yeah. if, if the if the white man can't be saved, that was the clip you mm-hmm. played. Yeah, yeah. And at the same time, if only the black Hebrews can sin, do I have that right? Well then then what the then the white man doesn't need to be saved from anything. Well, I don't, what am I missing? I don't even think it's like he doesn't even have any kind of possible relationship with God. And I think he hinted towards that. He's like, oh, you think the white man's going to repent and say, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I thought th- he said, you think the white man can be saved. Yeah. And he's saying no. And, uh, and I don't know. So salvation is not possible. But if no. he doesn't sin, then he doesn't need salvation. That's where with, I was going with that. It might be just have to do with who he is in his nature or essence, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Just unchosen. They're big on election, you know, which is interesting. Well, um, I mean, they'd have to be. Yeah, well. And, and election, in their case, is very ethnic. Let me give you a flavor of how they do it, because what they do is the guy's talking, and there's a dude beside him, and he'll say, Acts 2 and 5! And the guy starts yelling the scripture. So I want to give you a flavor of the, actually the way the experience is when you're dealing with them, so you can kind of... Give me Acts 2 and uh, 5, man. I got it. Now, I'm going to show you what the Israelites are all over the world. No other nation is like that. I got it. We ready. And they're, and they're dwelling at Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Jews, devout men out of every nation. Out of every nation. If I told you to take your money out of your... Again, man. Oh. And they were dwelling <laughs> at Jerusalem. Jews, which is short for Judah... Devout men uh-huh. out of every nation under heaven. We read them nations that we was in, that you got to take these people out of. Now when this was uh, noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. In his own language. Go ahead. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Gal- uh, Galilean? Uh-huh. And how he uh, hold on, Galilee is a city in uh, Israel. So you- BHI on BPR. <laughs>Doctrine, Theology, Apologetics, that's what we discuss every week, 6 p.m. Check us out, BackpackRadio.com. Yes, we are on iTunes. Been chopping up about the black Hebrew Israelite movement. Dudes you might see with beards and, like, cut out cloth over their, like, sort of hip-hop clothes, yelling at everybody that goes by, holding signs, talking about Old Testament laws and all of that. The point of this show is to not just talk about how they're wrong. I seriously doubt any BHI folks are going to listen to this. We want Christians who know the Word of God to interact with these guys no matter what. Now, I know it sounds crazy and, and hard and challenging, but like if you see him chilling in the coffee shop, because uh, they do go to places and, and have their Bible study or whatever, uh, probably not a coffee shop, but if you see him wherever you see him, and if you see him, you know, come on. Maybe they, a delicatessen. Maybe. I don't know. I don't. A lot of them are vegetarians, apparently. But see, the thing is, you know, we can't just have Christians be scared of them. 
And um, we need people witnessing, like Slim Jim, our guest today, was with his friends, which I appreciate. And a lot of these guys come out of a Christian background, and they actually love the Word. And some of them just misled, and they just never heard a Christian explain the Scripture. All of a sudden, this young, charismatic so, guy so does, and they're minute. caught up. How do you know a lot of them came out of a Christian background? Well, they have. it's clear they have uh, the... The, the emphasis or understanding of what church is. I'm not saying they were all Christians. I'm saying sort of more of a church background is what I mean, meaning people in their family and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. What I find to be particularly odd about this group is is that there doesn't seem to be, and I, I'm basing it partly on this article that you, that you showed me in UK Apologetics, there doesn't seem to be any real consensus or consistent uh, theology that goes with them. It's a rather, it's a, it's a mixture. Obviously, their ancestry yeah. and, and the belief that they're somehow the descendants of the Jews uh, is is uh, the key part. Yeah. But but other than that, I'm not sure exactly what they believe. Not a lot of whole, not a whole lot of cohesion, and it's difficult um, to pin them down because there's differences between each city and each group. But one big thing that is consistent, and then I'll let Jim comment after I play this, is the focus and emphasis on Old Testament law. So you're going to hear them asking me, why don't I have a beard and why I have a hat on? And basically saying, I'm going to go to hell uh, if I don't change that. Uh, which, well, that's a further problem, I guess. I don't know. Jeremy, you ready to I'm going to play this clip. Here you go. Yeah. Where's your beard at if you love God? You preach like, it with a hat Where's your yeah, beard? What, what, what the fuck? Oh, we got to have a beard. Yeah, yeah. Why you got your hat on, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't it say in the New Testament what you like to quote, right? You, a man that have his head covered dishonors his head? Yeah. So you in dishonor right now. Okay. Man, you're, jo- you're, you're a joker, man. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. a joker. You are a joker. Oh. Why haven't you took it off your hat yet if you respect what the Bible yeah, says? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still ain't doing it. Okay. You still ain't doing it. Why don't you preach the gospel? If the gospel is, yeah. listen, listen, listen. Hold on, wait, wait. Clear, clear the sign. The gospel is, the people that your people probably the same as nobody's in wax. We are the chosen people. No, 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 no. no. The other nations do not like us, okay? That's documented. I don't know who us is. The, the, but I'm going to learn. Let me, let me break down the us, okay? No, I'd actually rather you not because it's a bunch of poppycock. Listen, listen. This, this, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, what color are the Jews? What color are the Jews? Okay, so there you hear him say what the gospel is, and it's that they're chosen and others aren't. Pastor Bob, what, quick what, reaction. What color there. are the Jews? He well, asked the question. What was the answer? I, 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 well, I said I'd rather not hear it, so I don't think we got into it. But they had a weird thing with me where they didn't like calling the Hebrew Israelites Jews. They said that was a fake thing. Jews are like the fake version of them, like white imposters. So was he going to say Jews are white and therefore they're not Israelites? Well, the fake Jews aren't dark-skinned, then they're not Israelites, but the black ones are not Jews. You wouldn't call them that. You would call them Israelites, and they are dark. That was my understanding. Slim Jim, comment on that, because there, again, is more deficiency of the gospel, and you see the legalism and the works righteousness there as well. Uh, comment on that. Yeah, I, I think uh, this is where systematic theology is useful for, for counter-cult apologetics. We you know, show the law to have them show their, their need of a Savior, their all their their conviction uh, to convict them. And I think the other thing is also as well, it's, it's kind of hard. Is they're jumping all over the place. Um, one thing we were trying to do is realize that sometimes they change their goalposts where they think salvation is only for those that were black Hebrews. And then they'll show up a few verses that, that the, go- the, the, the gospel and salvation is for the Jews. So we, we've tried to ask a question um, with them, and, and I think it's important to realize that their goalposts is to show only for the Jew, Israel, and we, we try to ask them, you know, does the Bible show that no one outside of Israel will ever be saved, uh, not even one? Uh, I think that, that's important to, to realize, because race is a big part of their gospel, in addition to, to um, the law and almost a works righteousness yeah. idea. Race, not grace, is the key emphasis. And remember I said, why don't you preach the gospel? Because they were on me about not having a, a, a beard and a hat, and uh, why don't you take that off and do that if you love God. And I said, why don't you preach the gospel if you love God? And he said, the gospel is, and, you know, there's a cacophony of noises, but basically that, hey, there's chosen people. Is there, is there, is the election apply to those of the right ancestry, regardless of whether or not they know it or not? In other words, is there sort of universalism within their own form of election? Difficult to tell, but that's where it seems like they get their sense of purpose about what they're doing, which is to preach this message to help those who need to be called out, who have lost their true identity, 
to the truth of what the black Hebrew light Hebrew Israelite message is. So that's where they reinterpret the Great Commission, because I asked them about all nations, ethnos. They said, yes, because the black man is all over the globe, we must pull him out of all nations. And so I might need to go to China to find the true black, black Hebrew Israelites. I might need to go to India to pull out the true who will respond to this and realize that they are of the chosen people and to wake up and stop having the white men tell them who they really are. So that was where this sense of purpose – That that's where it seems they actually – think they are trying to accomplish something. And I had some bystanders pass by and interject into the conversation. You can hear it if you go to the website uh, where I posted this all up on my blog, Backpack Truth. And they talked to this guy who was a young black dude way different than they were talking to me because I was a maybe because of the Sicilian part. This guy was a definite. They totally changed their tone and all kinds of stuff and were really trying to almost plead with him to wake up. It was, it was interesting. I mean, Slim Jim comments on that. Yeah, um, yeah. I wonder how how they would handle uh, really when just the biggest thing is you know they're line by line or line upon line thing which they used to justify jumping everywhere. But I would really love to maybe next time I see them go through Romans nine to eleven to show the contrast uh, with the Jews and Gentiles. Uh, in particular, I'm, I'm thinking right now. I'm just pulling it up right now. Uh, Romans eleven fifteen. I uh, was talking about the Jews' rejection of the gospel. Uh, if their rejection is a reconciliation world. What would their acceptance be but life uh, from the dead? Or, uh, you know, just just Romans uh, in general, just how it talks about the contrast of the Jews rejecting the gospel, and here are also the, the Jews, um, the correction, the Gentiles coming to, coming to faith. Um, I think that that'll be interesting. To well, see I mean, they... yeah, they have insuperable problems with the New Testament with regard, again, to the fact that race becomes uh, not relevant in the New Testament. And uh, uh, a Jew is not one outwardly, but one inwardly, uh, and and they seem to reject that in its entirety. Yeah, that's why some of them probably reject the New Testament as a whole. Well, I would think they would. Uh, that would be more consistent if they did. But these guys didn't seem to. However, they made a big defense of the Apocrypha, this particular group. Why, why would that be? I don't know. They found useful text in it. In but uh, but uh, let, me, let, me, let me play a clip where I asked them to turn to Revelation 5, and there you see where it says all people, tribe, tongue, you know, and watch what they say. It relates to their view of what the afterlife is. When it says that all nations, you're supposed to have that if you said you want to go back and forth in Scripture. Yeah, go to Revelation 5. No, you, you get it. We ain't your servants. You, if you have another nation, you're going to serve us. That's what Christ said. And the service of God <laughs> you serve us. and the promises. So there, I just, I just was telling them to turn to the passage we were in. And they took umbrage, saying, no, you get it. You serve us. If you're of another nation, you're going to serve us. That's what Christ said. So their view is sort of, because they constantly referred to chains and foot on the neck and sort of what the new heaven and new earth entails, which is the black Hebrew Israelites and perhaps to some degree those who are truly black Hebrew Israelites and maybe don't know it, ruling and reigning the other nations with a rod of iron with Christ, who, of course, also is black as described in the book of Revelation per BHI theology. There, there is some consistency. I'm not saying they're consistent in their thought process. They have a certain tortured logic. I haven't seen a lot of it. <laughs> Slim Jim comments on uh, what we discussed so far, perhaps. Yeah, um, it's you know, wow. I mean, talk about it. We, we, using the word is, is so important to reach them. I think uh, they, if holding that view, um, it, it can't reconcile. It's uh, incompatible with. Even the Abrahamic uh, covenant in Genesis twelve three, like why why were the Jews set uh, separate in the, originally in Genesis twelve three is really um, there will be a blessing to to the nations and of course we know from the other covenants that follow and, and redemptive history as it unfolds um, that's that's salvation for, for the nations uh, when we evangelize right. uh, in our group we we try to use uh, Psalm twenty two the messianic prophecy and to show in Psalms twenty two that this is a uh, this is a blessing this death of this guy in Psalm 22, which we believe is Jesus Christ, yeah. Messiah, being prophesied, um, it's really for, for all nations, for, for all people. Uh, of course, there's, there's many multiple Old Testament passages, even if you were to say, to move away from the New Testament. Of course, New Testament right. is crystallized, but the Old yeah. Testament makes it very clear that the Jews were, were not just just there to, to enslave others, but from there would come the, the Messiah and, and a greater blessing 
uh, to, to the nations and to the world also as well. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. have no idea what they do with the death of Christ. Christ isn't important to them, it would seem to me, at all. Uh, yeah, I haven't figured that out other than sort of he he needs to be black and he tells them that they will crush everybody else. But, you know, you make a good point about a good dose of healthy covenant theology would put some of this to to rest if they would listen to understand. And this is why, you know, your systematic theology is important and how you interpret this text. Like oh, We are children of Abraham. Yeah, and you see right there that— So there is a sense in point? which that ethnicity is important, Yeah, although it's but, a spiritual and, ethnicity. And that's Galatians right there. And so the real issue is not just what you wear or maybe the fact that you're really rude or whatever the case is, that you accept the Apocrypha or don't— You know, I mean, some of that is important, but the, the, the key thing is this is not gospel— this is a, a condemning, damning message that's not gospel. Because technically, I want everyone to think just logically. Technically, they could. Um, technically, it, it could be like they could be like they could be right about the ethnicity stuff and this and that. And they there's just a lot of things that could be true about God. Really, could be you know a respecter of persons in this way. But like we have to under look back and say, okay, what does the Bible actually say? Though I don't mean they could be right from the scripture. I'm saying. I, I'm not being clear what I'm saying, but my point is the real issue, though, is not their sort of racism or this or that. Now, that's an outflowing of their lack of gospel. I'm just trying to get the point. The real issue with them is it's not the gospel. It's another gospel. Yeah, but so my struggle is this. I can see the appeal uh, of the LDS Church. I can see the appeal of Scientology. I can see the appeal of Jehovah's Witnesses. I've yet to see the appeal, I guess, unless I was a uh, African-American who felt— um, well, I mean, you know, let's say you're ostracized, yeah, Austria, let's say you felt Austria, minimized yeah. and you have this empowering message. It seems of like supremacy. it's got a very limited appeal, not based really on, on, on gospel truth, but no. maybe based upon just on, uh, you know, on, on the background. I, I just don't see the appeal. I would think this is a very small group. It is small and, uh, and it can't grow too big. No, it's mainly young black males. And, and it's unless really... it's every, unless it's every African American in the world. And, no. and if they could convert, I guess it'd be a big church. Uh, and there's also some idolatry of the self ultimately involved because they have them. So, but, yeah, so that's interesting. I mean, Slim Jim, some final thoughts or comments on them. And what would you say to fellow Christians or maybe even BHI folks? What do you say, man? Yeah, um, just I think practical things maybe to help, uh, you know, with your guys' theme of taking it to the streets. Um, I, I think it's good to, to ask them questions and really shift it to the burden of proof. Uh, so many times they only prove only that Jews will be saved or Israel will be saved, but I think the burden of proof is on them to show that there's not even any Gentile or heathen who is saved. So I think that's we need to be reminded uh, of what it is, the burden of proof, and for them not to change their goalposts. I think also as well, um, since they were trying to steamroll us to uh, take advantage of it, if there's another brother, um, there were times they were just, were just yelling so loud. Um, we, I just started talking to Andy so that it cuts their conversation so that we could... Uh, own the conversation again and use the crowd, I think, to, to your favor. Um, it was so strange. We evangelized them. You know, Muslims come up to us all the time and, and we disagree. But that day was the most weirdest day. We had a friend named Paul, a Muslim that we always witnessed to over the last years. He even came and, and said, you know, so we took advantage of the crowd to try to control them so that we would be able to 